everyone, the Flying Scotsman here. Welcome to this video. Now, in this video, you join me as I am away to um, unbox something. What is it? Well, we'll find out um, in due course. So, without further ado, let's uh, get on with the unboxing. Now, obviously to unbox items, um, we will be working with uh, quite sharp implements that could be quite dangerous. So uh, we all need to make sure that we are nice and alert. Best way to do that, of course, is a cup of tea or a glass of iron brew. Mmm, that's a good cubby. <laughs> and um, second of all, if you're the sort of person that um, thinks that uh, lowering our food standards and our consumer standards just so that the UK can get a trade deal with Donald Trump's America is a good idea. Um, and you're probably going to want to get a responsible adult to uh, do this for you. Of course, this is uh, the first video that's been recorded after uh, Brexit. So this is uh, actually a Flying Scotsman first year. We are recording a video out with the European Union. Actually, no, I was, I was on the fence, really, about um, the EU. But certainly, you know, those things that I've... <laughs> Stuff like the uh, freedom of movement and um, I basically kind of have a Norway style agreement, as it were. A lot better than what anything that Boris Johnson's going to pull out of his arse. Anyway, back to the unboxing. there and now we have uh, the actual box itself and um, it has an air bubble pack thing so obviously this is a laptop computer a very nice one at that actually um, Here we are, this machine here, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take away these documents. Um, right, don't need that. Okay, so what is this then? Well, what this is, is um, an HP EliteBook 8470B. Now, uh, it did come with um, a wee yellow bit of paper, says DW on it. Um, right, okay, so, apparently, does this laptop post and enter the BIOS, okay, 
tech, processor model version, speed and cores, i5 3320M um, at 2.6 gigahertz. This is dual core hyper threaded. Display, resolu uh, display condition resolution, um, 1366 by 768 tech. Touchscreen, no, that's okay. Uh, graphics, HDMI, DisplayPort, uh, VGA, DVI. So DisplayPort is um, circled and it's integrated. Um, RAM quantity and type, one times four gig, DDR3. Um, hard drive types, form factor size, ca uh, caddies, 500 gig, two and a half inch hard disk drive. Interfaces, drives, SIM circled, webcam circled, Wi-Fi circled, um, CD, SD circled, DVD, DVD-RW circled, battery health, uh, 5649 milliamp hours, it doesn't mean, I'm going to say. So, that's the condition of the machine i realize i'm actually gonna to have to get a plug it didn't come with one i uh, i should have some because i do have a couple of hps so this machine seems to be quite nice lead is made out of metal <clears throat> so you might be wondering why have i went and bought what appears to be a 2010s hp when I basically spent all the all the time during the era this laptop came out was current, telling people that under no uncertain circumstance they should absolutely not be buying Hewlett Packard machines. Well, yeah, it's quite simple, really. Um, <laughs> the machines that people were buying that um, I wished they wouldn't were actually the consumer grade machines, the pavilions. And they really were built down to a price. At the time, they were hell of unreliable and were just basically not very pleasant. Um, I mean, this was at a time when you could buy machines with the AMD E1 CPU. This was at a time when the HP Stream was a thing. Um, the HP Touch Smart at uh, the office where I volunteer, that was, that's, actually continues to be a thing um but uh it's also quite an anomaly of that machine because it actually continues to work when i was in business when i had my computer business i often found that hps would be the most likely to fail in a way that was uh, rendered them uneconomical to repair so that kind of became a bit of a contentious thing for me. Uh, I'm going to be honest, because um, I used to hate those machines, because if I couldn't fix them, I wouldn't have charge. I had to be competitive. It was a brand new business. I was also visually impaired. Um, but, um, yeah, this doesn't really answer why I have bought this machine. Well, while the consumer grade ones were being an absolute pile of garbo, the business spec machines were generally quite good. It's often believed that um, what was the good side of Compaq, you know, the Desk Pros, the Armadas, the Evos, blah de blah, the HP bought that side up and made their make their um, business line systems or base their business line systems on compact design and uh, they would uh, the thing that would give credence to that is that um, after the HP compact merger yes compact continued to exist but you also had the you also had a compact line of Hewlett Packard machines, so you can buy HP Compact machines, 
and these were generally um, at the business end of computers. Um, stuff that, um, well, the machines that would go on to become the HP ProDesk series. Um, that's not like any other line of computers you've heard of before. Certainly not on this channel. Except in every way. <laughs> so I guess what you're looking at here, and, and we have covered this before actually, but what we're essentially looking at here is, well, this is a modern compact Evo, which in turn is an Armada. So then, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the new Armada E500, I guess. <laughs> now, the condition of this machine is quite fair. I got this for uh, 79.99, and it wasn't on a whim. This is actually um, going to be part of a project, actually. Um, I have bought this machine for a specific thing, and, um, well, you know, we will go into some of it. But um, some of what this machine is going to be used for will be revealed in due course. And uh, I, know, uh, I know that um, anyone who really cares about this channel is going to be quite excited for um, what this machine is eventually going to be uh, used for. But um, I will give you a clue as to what it's going to be used for uh, when we install... The operating system but uh, yeah I mean it is going to be let's be honest it's going to be a Linux box um, that way I'm going to be able to take part in the Averlug meetings you know I'll have a Linux box there um, I do have a desktop that runs Linux the Dell XPS 8300 runs Manjaro but um, this is going to be my Linux laptop and um, taking it to lug meetings is just going to be a part of what I do with it. Second part, well, I'm still kind of making preparations for that. And um, like I said, you'll all find out in due course. Anyway, so the condition of this machine is pretty good. There is some pretty uh, bad scratches on the lid, but I think... That doesn't matter. I think. I think I've sorted it. There we go. <laughs> yeah. So, let's have a look at the machine. Let's uh, give it a wee bit of a tour. So, on the left hand side we have um, what do we have actually? It looks to be, um, right, okay, now I understand. So we've got the power adapter, we have mini firewire port, not seen one of those in years, a couple of USB ports, this looks to be just USB 2, um, express card slot, DVD burner, on the front we have the uh, lid release latch, very MacBook-ish actually I must say. Um, then on the other side we have uh, on the other side we have headphone out, microphone in, eSATA, another USB port. Display port, event, Kensington lock slot, and then on the rear of the machine we have <laughs> a modem port, um, VGA out, Ethernet, the battery, and uh, well that's it really. So, I guess it's time to um, grab a charger. Well folks, I found a power adapter. It's not good. <laughs> It's a yucky third party power adapter, but hopefully it should work for just now. However, my...
purchasing of a genuine HP power adapter might not be the dumbest thing to happen this year. So uh, I should maybe make that happen. Anyway, I think we're about ready to uh, to get the show on the road. Oh, and I think I found the SD card adapter. I must have missed that. Uh, it's under the uh, first set of USB parts on the left. Uh, so, yeah, sorry about that, guys. Missed that. Also, I've just remembered something. Apple machines have not had um, a button release latch for the lid since uh, since 2008. Oops. Um, <laughs> so, while I was away getting a power adapter, I uh, took the liberty of getting a couple of other items. Um, Firstly, a mouse. Secondly, keyring of life for operating systems. So, now that the machine's got a bit of power, let's uh, let's switch it on. Now we see that there's a fingerprint scanner. A uh, mouse pad and a track point. Got Wi Fi, I think volume up and down buttons, and um, a nice power button here. So I think what I'm going to do is, yeah, there we go, go into the BIOS setup. Um, not sure if that's support, yeah. It is. It's, it's kind of like a think light. So, uh, yeah, HP uh, not having copied uh, IBM's homework at all. Well, these buttons light up. That's kind of nice. But um, the keys don't. This is not a lighty uppy keyboard. That's okay. <coughs> My main machine isn't either. Um, so, we have... Uh, So we're in the system BIOS, we can have a look at the system information, Elite Book 8470P, um, asset tracking number, um, warranty start date, so I guess this would be the machine's birthday or when it was ordered or something. So that's the 11th of July 2012, so it's uh, three days after this channel started. Well, uh, you know, this is the video on Frontier. Um, so yeah this this machine is uh, eight years old yeah um system board id system bias version video bias version intel 2130 intel core i5 3320m cpu 2.6 gigahertz same as what was in my thinkpad t430 actually i'm just gonna i'm just gonna adjust uh, the uh, setup here sorry about that um here we go just move the tripod out the road <coughs> right um Primary battery serial number, secondary battery serial number. Um, press escape to return. Set system date and time. Yep, that all looks... A wee bit out, but uh, um, there we go.
and we'll uh, reset the BIOS to factory default. Now, <clears throat> following configuration change was requested to this computer's trusted platform manager. I'll clear the TPM. Um, yes, I think I will accept that. Um, reset fingerprint sensor to factory settings. Users need to register again to use a fingerprint authentication. Warning, ensure that your current login method does not require fingerprint, otherwise you will be locked out of your notebook if you accept this reset. Right, okay, now um, there is no DHCP server on my network. Hang on, no, there is a DHCP server, there is no uh, Pixie Group server, rather. I hope there's a DHCP server, it could be a problem if not. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this flash drive in. Well, Return to the BIOS. Whoops. Um, so just like a compact, it's F10 to get into uh, the BIOS. <clears throat> Got boot options. Could have a custom logo, fast boot, CD ROM boot, eSATA boot, Device configurations, got USB, legacy support, SATA, speeds, HDI, SATA mode, uh, built-in device options, yep, port options, set security level, risk, yeah. So, there we go. Now, one thing I have learned from my last Elite book is um, that I really don't want to be doing with messing about with the fi uh, fingerprint reader. Because unlike a lot of systems... The fingerprint reader goes all the way down to the BIOS and it can lock you out. So that's just going to sit there and look pretty. So what I'm going to do is I am going to boot from USB hard drive. So I have got easy to boot on here and we're going to install Manjaro KDE. And what we're going to do is we're just going to boot with the regular options, even though this is a UK keyboard. So there we go. Hopefully that will boot. Let's, um, let's see if I can actually switch this light off. Good. Hmm. 
That might do it. <laughs> right, there we go. So if I want to switch a light on, there's a button to the right of the webcam that will let me do that. Excellent. If I want to put it off, I can just put it away again. It's a pop-up headlight. Um, <laughs> so we're booted up into Manjaro. Um, so I guess I could go into the terminal and um, could do INSI, INXI, tell me all about the uh, system. And I could go and uh, LS PCI. USB controller, um, USB controller, family express. Don't think there's USB three ports on this system. <laughs> I don't know. Um, <clears throat> okay. So we're ready to install. We're gonna have a go at installing in UEFI mode. So why not? If it goes wrong, we can just use um, MBR mode. So we want to install in British English. Um, I wonder if there's a Scottish option. Um, also, that's a good, there we go. I can actually see. Uh, no, there isn't. Well, that's a bit of a shame. Anyway, um, go next. Fortunately, London is the closest city in here. We're going to go for a UK layout. Yes, I know our enter key is a bit oddly shaped. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to manually partition the hard drive. Um, so I want a new partition table. So I'm going to create a GUID partition table, GPT. Excellent. Now, um, First off, I want to create an EFI partition. It's a FAT32 partition. Um, 100 meg. And Okay, so I've marked this partition as boot and ESP EFI system partition. Um, 100 megabytes. There we go. Um, next thing I would like to do is create uh, my swap partition. And for that, I'm going to make that 10 gigs. There we go. At some point, I probably would like to put an SSD in this system. So, <clears throat> that's a thing that might happen. Um, next thing. Going to create a, um, a root partition. I think what I'll do is um, make that 160 gigs. I know that's uh, quite excessive, but um, it'll give me uh, lots of space to install applications. And then 
I will make a separate slash home partition. And I'll mark that as a root. And I will mark the swap as swap. Right, okay, that's my uh, partitioning done. Um, so now I want to install to this partition and install bootloader on master boot record of 88 Toshiba. Um, yep. Now hopefully that should uh, work out what is a master boot record. So what is my name? Jay Wakefield. Uh, what do I want to log in as? Um, there we go. Choose an password. There we go. Now I can choose an office suite, um, either free office, LibreOffice, or um, the no office suite. I've never heard of that one. I actually first read that as Neo Office Suite. I'm like, is this a third option? Uh, no, there's not. There, there just isn't. Anyway, um, so I'm just going to choose LibreOffice. <laughs> Um, there is another office suite that we can install and um, I'm going to show you that in due course. Um, so this tells us all what all is going to happen. So we know exactly what's going to be installed and where. Hopefully. Manjaro installer is about to make changes to your desk in order to install Manjaro 18.1.2. That's absolutely fine. Now, some of you might be wondering, why Manjaro? Why not Ubuntu Mate or Kubuntu or even Debian? Well, Manjaro is something that I've recently started using. And, you know, I, I do quite like its implementation of KDE. Um, you can get Manjaro in other flavors, X, uh, XFC, I think Mate, Gnome. You know, you can get it, you know, with all different kinds of uh, uh, window managers, desktop environments, rather. The... Uh, Another thing that I do like about it as well is the fact that it has quite up-to-date versions of applications and it does seem to be quite easy to use and um, if you're a gamer, which I'm not going to be much gaming taking place on this machine, Sora, um, it's quite good. You can actually um, use Manjaro to do gaming and some of you might be thinking yeah gee you went through that spiel about hp at the beginning of the video but still why an elite book well the elite books have actually proven themselves um to be very capable machines um for the longest time lml3 actually had an 8460p the uh, Sandy Bridge version of this machine, and uh, that worked really quite well. Well, I've uh, you know went for the um, Ivy Bridge version, the eighty four seventy p. I used to have a sixty nine thirty p. That was uh, that was pretty good as well, actually. Um, it's uh, not a bad uh, not a bad machine to have, but um, you know that also felt quite premium. Um, 
that uh, being a Cartoon Joe, even a late era Cartoon Joe, it's not exactly um, the quickest thing in the world now. It's um, really is a shame and we really must face the facts. But um, yeah, Cartoon Joe is now very much in the realms of, well, it's getting to the realms of, uh, <laughs> some might say retro computing. It's uh, it's really quite depressing. But um, Cartoon Joes are brilliant if you have games that won't run on newer versions of Windows, of which now there are quite a few. Um, which is uh, why the new Beast machine that I have uh, with the uh, Q9500 that I've got in there. But um, yeah, this machine I think uh, will make uh, will be quite capable. With it being a business machine, it should be uh, quite durable, quite robust. Um, I have been using actually a consumer HP that I was given. The screen seems to be going a wee bit, so um, I just wanted, and it only has a, I think it's a Pentium in there, so I really wanted something a bit more capable. So I got this. Upgrade, well, I'd like to put an SSD in this at some point, if I can. And I would also like to add another four gigs of RAM. I feel that would uh, make the system a wee bit quicker. And it would also allow me to do a wee bit more on it. So, yeah, that's, uh, that is a thing. So, anyway, I will let this go and install, and then um, I'll come back to you once we've uh, completely wrecked it. I like that. All done! <laughs> so, let's go and uh, reboot now. What I want to do is see uh, what kind of options we now have in the BIOS. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to F9 this. And uh, well, it doesn't seem to have uh, EFI. Duh! I, I've just. <clears throat> Why am I booting into that? That's not what I wanted. That also is not what I really wanted either. Okay, take two with this. Um, right, what I needed to do with the EFI partition, I've uh, done a bit more research, and um, I needed to mount it to slash boot slash EFI. Uh, this time I've made it 512 megs, and, well, it's actually registered itself as the EFI system, so would you look at that? So, 512 meg EFI partition, 10 gig swap, 160 gig root, and uh, 160 gig home. 
No, 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 295 gig home. I was, I was thinking that, and just thinking that that doesn't seem right somehow. Right, okay, so that is good. Um, install boot loader on the master boot record of the hard drive. And I'm going to go next, and yeah, we'll just reinstall. So I'll meet you hopefully at the other end where this time, hopefully, I've not completely wrecked it. So now we are ready for another reboot. Some of you might be thinking that I should just use MBR, but actually, there's a lot of machines now that are. Son of a bun! Honestly, <clears throat> there's a lot of machines now that are actually going towards EFI. Um, so, it's a good idea to learn it. Um, I wonder if there's an EFI file on here. Let's see. Um, Right, third time's a charm. Now, Easy to Boot does have its limitations. It doesn't support booting. Um, well, I tried making a .dot image PTN version of the Manjaro image, and um, booting from that, and it didn't work. So, on this laptop, I actually had to boot to an EFI file. Um, believe it or not, on the, this, <laughs> I actually had to go into the BIOS and, and manually select the EFI file on this flash drive, but it seems to work now. And um, I've gone into the install and on the partition screen, we now have EFI, select storage device. So that is good. Um, so, <clears throat> usual... Uh, Usual uh, pantomime, um, storage device, um, new partition table, GUID. Um, first thing I'm going to create, I think, is the uh, Hingme, um, the uh, 512 megabyte uh, EFI um, file, 512 um, EFI partition. Uh, no mount point, actually. Yep. Slash boot slash EFI. That is actually an option. I had to um, put that in manually last time. Um, hopefully now I can just uh, flag it as boot and Espanol. <laughs> uh, file system. Yep, there we go. Um, slash boot slash EFI. Perfect. There we go. EFI system. Uh, next. I want to create my uh, swap file, um, so I'm going to select the uh, swap file system, Linux swap, um, let's make that 10 gigs, so that's uh, 10 times 1024, which is 1024 0. Um, Good. Now um, I want to make my home partition, so I'm going to make that slash. Um, no, my root partition rather. So um, 160 gig. So 160 times 1024, 16, 3, 8, 4, 0. Um, there we go. That's a root partition, and the rest is going to be given over to a slash home partition. And uh, there we go. Done. Um, so, hopefully now what I can do is uh, install that to the root. Um, there's no 
option to store the bootloader on this screen anymore. So, um, yep, going to install that to the root. And uh, yeah, I'll put in the rest of my details. And there we go. And I've realised why um, it wasn't working last time. Probably because it was a GPT partition with an MBR operating system. Because it installed in MBR mode because it had booted the install installer in MBR mode. This is a bit complicated. Um, right. <clears throat> Hopefully that should work. Okay, so we're ready to boot yet again. <clears throat> Sorry, this is the first time I've done an EFI Linux boot. Flash drive is away. Oh. Well, that's kind of encouraging. You've got the HP logo. It worked. Absolutely perfect. Brilliant. So there we go. So unfortunately this does take a bit to boot. An SSD would indeed make it quicker. So, what have we learned? We have learned that it's uh, easy to boot, absolutely fine for legacy systems, still got a ways to go yet for EFI, UEFI systems. Um, so that is something that needs thought about. Also, we're getting where even in the Linux world, it makes sense to have a solid state drive like I have in uh, the Dell XPS. That is quite a bit quicker. Um, whether this supports EFI, uh, that remains to be seen. I don't know if it does. Um, there's a hell of a bunch of updates, so I need to go and start upgrading them. What I will do before I do anything else, though, is um, I... Uh, it talks about dependencies. There we go. Uh, what I will do before anything else, though, is I do want to make this easier for me to see. Also, I'll have a look at the hardware... There we go, Video Linux, that's fine. Um, so I'm going to select cursors and go to size 48. There we go. And what I can do as well with fonts is um, I could bump these up a wee bit if I wanted to. So um, actually, yeah, I'm going to do that. Um, So, there we go. And one good thing about Manjaro is that it has a Steam client built in. The Steam client. So, 
you know, if you're setting up a gaming machine, then that's quite easily done. Um, if you got the drivers. I did try installing... Um, I love this desktop background. I did try installing, actually, um, an AT, uh, AMD sorry, uh, Radeon R7 360 into the Dell XPS, but um, it didn't take it uh, because Dells, they tend to be a bit picky about the hardware you can use with them sometimes. It's a wee bit of a pain, but um, yeah. So, this machine is pretty much done. It's, um, there's a couple of things that I want to install on it, but, um, for the most part, that is it done. So, I guess with that said, I think I will end this video here. I hope you've all enjoyed watching it. Um, hang on, before I do quit though, I should probably check that the sound goes. Does indeed. Okay, well, I will end this video here, and I'd like to thank you all for watching, and please join me for my next one. Cheerie bye. Mm -hmm.